Why don't you begin session? Okay, um, please join me in prayer. Uh, Heavenly parents and true parents, thank you for giving this amazing opportunity to gather as brothers and sisters with our elders and to learn about the divine principle. Um, I hope that there's so many people here, people who know the principle, people who don't know the principle, young and old, and I hope that we can all learn a lot and unite together during this time. Um, yeah, and we invite you during this time to be with us. I pray this name of Sasha Tarasova, that of you and Ilya's best central family, Aju. 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 Oh, welcome. Well, thank you for joining us. Welcoming in. Yeah, thank you for joining everyone. Um, so we will be reading a little bit of the principle every week and then hearing a lecture from Reverend David Stewart. He's on my left. I don't know if he's on everyone's left. But <laughs> yeah, so before, I don't know, before we start, um, I think just I have only like one thing to say really is that, um, sorry, there's so many people coming. Um, yeah, you can ask questions in the chat or out loud or raise your hand, the raise your hand feature in your reactions. Um, you don't interrupt anyone. That's it. <laughs> and then I'll hand it over to Reverend David Stewart. Oh, yes. Yeah, I just posted a uh, copy of the uh, introduction in the chat, if anybody doesn't actually have the principle with them. And what I thought we could do can we divide up into rooms or not, Sasha? Yeah, yeah, we can. We can. Uh, actually, the introduction, I mean, I, one, one way to do it is just to divide up into threes and then people can read a different color rather than reading it all. Somebody can be red, somebody can be blue, and somebody can be yellow and read it. And, uh, and that way, and then people can write down their questions, look for, come up with questions, see if they find the answer to their question. And they can, you know, discuss among themselves also. And then we can come back together. How does that seem? Is that possible to divide up into threes? Uh, three. I think three threes is good because they're three colors. Yeah, okay, five I mean, if, they, if it doesn't work perfectly, we have 15 right now, so that's good. Maybe more will come on. Hi, uh, Daniel, how are you? I'm good. Li actually, li nice to see everybody. J-Ho, Aiden, if you can, uh, can we see you? Mr. Simon. Hi, J-Ho, how are you? Are you going by J-Ho or Aiden? Uh, J-Ho. J-Ho. How are you? You're good, uh, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Who and Wu Jin? Who's Wu Jin Kiason? Be nice to see you, Simon. I know you're hiding because you're doing other things, but I know you have a you have a camera, don't you? Oh, he's disappeared. I drove him away. <laughs> okay, we can do four rooms of three. No, three rooms of three and one room of four right now. Yeah, let's do that. Put, put me in the room with four, okay? Did, did you manage to read uh, everything there? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Most, you oh, read oh. the colors, yeah? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Does anyone have any, any thoughts, any comments, any questions about that? Or shall I ask you a question? <laughs> it's called the divine principle. Well, what's a principle? How would you define a principle? Ooh, that's, and, that's, hmm. Would it the truth. I, principles of truth? Yeah. The new truth an, yeah. An ideal? Some, some, something we strive for? Uh, uh, People strive. People are striving for the Olympic gold medal. I don't think it's. Uh, I understand what you mean, but let's let's uh, narrow. Hey, Alan, go ahead. 
Uh, I've had this discussion with my parents actually, uh, and I believe he worded the question in almost the exact same way you did. With, so, with who? Uh, my parents, dad specifically. So uh, his answer was something more akin to a, uni a universal law, as in it's true, uh, God brought it about, it's, it is what it is, and it's, as was stated in the introduction, this is the expression of the new truth. Or so you, you're telling me, are you, are you telling me some laws are not universal? Some aren't. Some are subjective to human society. Uh, the so laws you're that, you're talking about juridical laws there, right? Yeah. So laws, legal laws. Uh, yeah. What about scientific laws? Yeah, those. Are, I would say those are pretty universal. Right. So are they principles? The laws of thermodynamics, are they principles? Mm. Hmm. Well, the, if I may put in a very sneaky answer here, I would say those are principles. What's covered in this nice black book here are divine principles. So those are more... Uh, oh, a coward's answer. <laughs> yeah, but that's not even a good <laughs> translation. You see, divine principle is not the translation. No, no, it isn't. What is the real translation, Jeremy? You know. Tongil Walni. What should it be? Jackie knows. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead, Jackie. Okay. Well, I I think it's a com it's a uh, uh, united. Uh, expression of, of it's a united principle of uh, spiritual and material of scientific and that we can feel and experience in daily life Something yeah like that. that, that's true you know, the the divine divine principle was chosen by uh, young un kim the first missionary to america as the title but the better translation, of course, is closer to unification, right? Because unification of world Christianity, unification, everything. So, Alan, uh, tell your dad that doesn't work, his thing of principle. He walked out on me. <laughs> so. Yeah, I can do so, that for you. <laughs> anyone, anyone else want to try principle? To define principle? Uh, I want to check, you, you said, so the divine principle, its better translation is unifi just unification. Unification principle. Principle, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, there were, there were various different texts written in Korean. Uh, Only one bone. Uh, yeah. To, well, the the very earliest one is still somehow under translation uh yep. professor at the seminary is deeply involved in it he often mentions it but it's never being published <laughs> hmm. that's the the one that father finished in when mrs kang the, the came just before mrs kang came to visit him in 1952 in the summer of 52 the first disciple in South Korea. A anyone else? Shauna, you and Irene, you're a bright girl. Principle? Well, principle would be the reality behind the law, Alan, right? So there's certain laws of growth, right? There are laws of physical growth. There are laws of growth in economics. They're different laws of growth, different spheres of life. And one would say behind that, there's a principle of growth. There's a principle that things grow. So one way of defining principle is the reality behind the law, beneath the law. Yeah. I like that. You like that? Yes, yeah. very much. Yeah. So, yeah. so the unification principle is the principle that would allow all things to unite because there is a principle indeed of, of unity or of unification, right? Mm. 
Yeah. Alan, you're uh, muted. We can't hear you mumbling away there. <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna, if you've got some repost. No. Sorry. No, I was just uh, speaking to myself. Okay. All right, right. Here to be my king, I think. Very so, good. So let me make sure I understand this. What you're saying is the divine principle, the principle we're talking about in this case is the principle. Uh, so the the things that the reality that goes into growth into different way uh, life and stuff or what I'm saying is that you, you have Alan was correct that their laws and obviously scientific laws are indeed universal. But what I'm trying to say is that the principle is it's deeper. So why did father choose this word principle? It's because as it were, it's the, the reality on which laws are created. Yeah, it's the underlying reality. So the, the un, it's the reality that lies, as it were, beneath the law that allows laws to exist. So there are certain laws of growth. Why are there laws of growth physically, in economics, in society, in cultures, because there's the principle of growth. Where does that come from? That hmm? oh, is there someone? Uh, you, you you seem to cut out. Uh, so it wasn't my internet. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, How would you take over, on? No, it's okay. We can wait for them to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone remember the last point he was saying? Uh, hold on. I think uh, it's a principle of growth. Uh, crashed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I can go back. No, my computer crashed. Uh, <laughs> I I forgot to. I have a. I have to put a fan on it. You know. I think Zoom makes it very hot. So. Uh, <laughs> Whatever's wrong with it, it'll you're come on, back up in a moment. You were on a roll there. You were like really capturing us, and then all of a sudden, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah. It's like happiness, right? Everybody, everyone is seeking happiness. That great line of the the first line of divine principle. Yeah. So what? I mean, you're all here studying the principle. If you think. How would you explain to someone what, what's the what's the purpose of, of the principle and why are you studying this? So what did you capture from the introduction? Well, I think I think if we study the principle, in fact, all mankind should study the principle because the time has come that we should understand who we are, why we exist, where we're going after we we die, and what exactly is you know, the purpose of being human and where is, is there such a God or if there is, where is God and what happened to human history and why is the world so miserable through human history? That's the reason why, because the time has come that we have to understand and all these things must be clarified and then to move forward into a new human history, which is the Chuyuko mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. What did God's original ideal of creation? And we will live in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Yeah, very, very. John hit one really important reason for studying the yes. principle. And that is the question of existence, right? Yes. So philosophies and theologies, religions, they're right. trying to solve the problem of existence. Right. So that's one reason we study the principle because as of as of now we have not solved that problem correct right yeah. do you do you understand that jho this question of existence it's quite this is a sort of more philosophical question in a sense but it's a major major issue that we have not resolved it is who am i 
who am I? Why am I? Right? So, yeah. and of course, because there are various different answers to that, the answer of who yes. am I and why am I is so different in the divine principle to that which the, for instance, the communist uh, party of the Chinese communist party is teaching the people there. Mm. That one could only have conflict or between the Christian world and uh, the non-believing world. Mm. Even what is the difference between the, 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 the answer to that in the Muslim world and the Christian world? Does anyone know the answer? What's the difference in the answer to the, that, that question of existence? Who am I? Does anybody know what that is in the Muslim world? Uh, uh, go ahead. I recall speaking to a good friend about this, and if I remember correctly, I believe the answer was something akin to, essentially, we, uh, we serve to praise God. And what's the most important word there? Serve. Serve. Correct, Daniel. So in the Quran, Jesus' first words in the Quran, and I, I must admit, this is secondhand. I haven't read it, it actually. Is <laughs> I am the servant of God. And what is it, Leo, in the Bible? What is the relationship between Jesus and God in the Bible? What does Jesus call God in the Bible? Father. Father, even more than that. What does he say? Do you know the, the Hebrew? He uses the word Abba. Do you know the word Abba? Jeho, you know Father. the word Abba, don't you? Father. What's the word Abba in Korean, Jeho? You don't, don't you know, speak in Korean with mommy and daddy? Oh. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, Abba, father, basically. No, no, that's no? Abba G, right? Abba. So what's, 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 what do you call, you, 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 you say, my oldest son drives me nuts by calling me father sometimes, but, uh, Dad? What, do you, what do you call him? What do you call that big guy in your house? <laughs> Dad. Dad or daddy, right? <laughs> so Jesus actually called God daddy, Abba, Abba. Mm. I mean, I, our father who art in heaven, formal, but in the moment of, uh, in moments of deepest, you know, suffering, it was daddy, daddy. So very different understanding of our existence, right? And therefore our purpose. I am, you know, father-son relationship, dad and son, dad and junior, whatever it is you like, as opposed to if, if Jesus' first words are, I am the servant, then what is God? The master. <laughs> right. That's right. So are you all aware that father was called master for a long time? When John and Jackie, Uncle John, Auntie Jackie joined the church, they used to read the speeches. And what did it say on the front, Jackie? It said master speaks. Master speaks for years, right? It took a long time for that to change. We would get the copies of Father's speech, and it always says, Master Speaks. But then that, that changed. And we didn't talk about, by the time I joined the church, it was always, we always talked about Father as Father, yet still the speeches had Master Speaks on them. Pretty sure in the late 70s, yeah. early 80s, it was still the same, right? So was that a, tr a translation difference, or was that like a feel like a, a, a father changed the way he talked about God or how, how did that well, it was it no it was the, it was the nature of our relationship with father uh, okay so at that time right at that time 
Yeah, I mean, when Father first came to America in 1965, sorry, you know, they were prepared for Master coming, not uh, Father. Yong Un Kim, the original missionary, when she prepared the, uh, the, the few members that there were, she did that. Okay. Anyway, we looked at the, this question of principle. It, it's important to have some understanding of that. Then as you go on, so one question is the question of the divine principle wants to elucidate or solve is the question of existence. What is the other major, major issue in our lives? The question of who I am, what, why I'm here, What's the other big problem we have in the world? Happiness and avoiding misfortune. Yeah, but how, how, how do you become happy? How, how, what, what defines your happiness or lack thereof? Well. Who else we got here? We, we need some other. I, yeah, let, yeah. Let, me, let me get to. What about these young ladies? So quiet there. And we still didn't see Wu Jin. We'd like to see you, Wu Jin. Shauna, what makes you happy? Come on. Hi, Wu Jin. How are you? I'm good. What makes you happy, dear? Um, when people around me are happy. When people are happy. What do you have with those people? What do we call it? What's what do we call it? That that thing we have with people. We call it a love. Love, but that's that's really great. What is it, Irene? What are we trying to? Ah, uh, Alan wrote it in the chat. Yeah, everyone uh, can see. Spoiler. Spoiler from Alan. <laughs> Just don't look so at what the are we chat. trying to solve? We're trying to solve the problem of relationship. I, you know, keep the chat open, right? While you're, while you're doing this, all right? So the divine principle is trying to solve, trying to, it's saying, it's proclaiming that it's resolving these two issues central to man that we've been trying to resolve throughout history, trying to understand one is existence and the second is relationship, right? So, that's why the principle of creation is completely centered around relationship, give and take, give and take action, right? Central principle of the principle of creation. Could you say also for the purpose of goodness? Yep. Yeah. Well, what's the, 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 so the purpose of rela relationships is to create goodness, right? Yeah. So yeah. with happiness and goodness. Yeah. So by and resolving the issues of relationship, by resolving the issues of existence and relationship, we will, as it were, inevitably we will create goodness. So that's that's our goal. Our is goal it, is to is it, oh sorry. Right. So we no, go ahead. If you want to say something, Daniel, don't worry. If you, so w what's the goal in resolving these issues, these fundamental questions of existence and relationship? What do we want to do? Is it, uh, uh, just checking, is it the relationship with human beings ourselves or a relationship with God that, that it's answering? All of them, right? All of it. Okay. It would be the three blessings. Okay, three blessings. That makes sense. Well, you know, it's just, I mean, I'm just saying as, as an introduction, as a principle, what, what is the div unification divine principle claiming to do? It's claiming to resolve, to solve these issues of, is of existence and relationship so that, what, so that what can we do? Therefore, what will we be able to do? Jackie touched on it would be able to be goodness, but what would we be able to solve? Why are you also studying this? Why do we study principle? Why do we want other people to study the principle? Well, 
Shona. To have one world family. Yeah, that would be the end goal. But what are we trying to do in order to make one world family? What are we trying to solve? Anyone got any problems? <laughs> what? Anybody got any problems? We all have problems. <laughs> and what are we trying to do? What are we trying to do? Resolve the problem. We are trying to solve or resolve our problems. So what's the divine principle? Why do we study the principle? Because we want to resolve, we want to solve our problems. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we can resolve resolve these issues about existence and relationships, we will go a very long way towards solving our problems. So we solve our problems as individuals, then we can solve our problems on the family level, then we can solve our problems on, you know, communal, on the level of our community, our society, and the larger world to create that one world. I mean, what is the problem between North and South Korea? It's a problem of different views of existence and different and a, a relationship problem. Right. Oh, that's right? interesting. Yes, yeah. isn't you that can, true? So, you can boil so, it down to those two things. Yeah, and you, yeah. and you, so you want to solve that problem. So you, how are you going to solve that problem by bringing this? What the, the principal claims is a higher level of truth, a new truth. So it's like a new expression of truth, right? New yeah, a new expression, expression, higher level truth. of truth, and, and and it has, it has outrageous claims, right? Right. To integrate religion and science, that should appeal to some of you young people. Sean, are you? Are you more on the art side or the science side? What you like? I'm determined Shauna will speak, you see. Sorry? Do you like arts more, like English and history? and Or do you like science more? English and history. Good. Do you like religion? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you go to Catholic school? Yeah. All right, so you have religion every day. I love the prayers of uh, Simon's teach of Nolan's teacher. He goes to, you know, whatever in preschool. What is he? Pre K. Pre K. He's pre K, and every day the teacher prays. Mm -hmm. yeah. nice. Once I asked Martin why why do you do so poorly in religion? His mark in religion was so low, going to Catholic school, and he said, "Oh, you know the." The priests and the, the nuns, they're very well-meaning, but they don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. That's true. And one, one of my children wrote on why Jesus didn't come to die. It wasn't. He, he was told you should keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. So anyway, this is... Uh, can't see why they didn't have a, why they have a problem with that one. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, what do you th do? You think this is really possible? This unity of religion and science, because that's what the principle claims. What does that? What does it even mean? The integration of religion and science. It's talking about internal, external truth, and all these things. <clears throat> Go ahead, Daniel. So the way I learned it was they answered two different questions. The religion, at, at, this kind of boils it down, makes it like simple to understand. I'm not sure if, if it answers everything with it, but basically religion answers how, uh, no, religion answers why, why things are, why, why things are like this or that. Um, science answers how, how it happens, how uh, the physical forces behind it and stuff. And right now at this point, each are trying to answer the other's question. So. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, scientists definitely can go beyond that, right? So they obviously they they have they're very bright people. So a lot and, of and so, and religion used to do the same with the uh, Aristotle with the sky. <laughs> sky revolving around the earth rather than the earth revolving in the sky and stuff it's well both. obviously if you look at the history of science since the time of christ up until the reformation at least then all the major scientists were religious people yeah they there was no it was actually there was no conflict between religion and science. People often will come out and say, "Well, Galileo," but it's almost like the exception that proves the rule. Okay, so that's interesting. Really, the when does the division between religion and science really become marked? Uh, if I need to take a shot at it. All right, Alan. All right, so I'm going to try answering your previous prompt as well, but for this one, when it becomes marked, I would say is when as science finds something that contradicts religion, it's not necessary. It's, I don't think it would be the other way around, that religion finds something that science would find unacceptable, or no, that science finds something that religion would find unacceptable, I think it's the other way around. That science finds some, or that religion finds something, or believes in something that science Thanks. Uh, no, we don't have any evidence for that. And so to answer the previous prompt, I think religion and science can be united in one of two ways. And the first way would be through external truth and that, uh, or centered on external truth, I should say, not because internal and external should be uh, united as one anyways, but there's one center. So if it's centered on that, then there are two assumptions that have to be met. The first is that what we believe is right. And the second is that uh, everything we believe in God, the spirit world, so on and so forth can be uh, proven by science. They can be found out and proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. The second way I think uh, it re revolves through around uh, something that um, I remember hearing uh, about your father saying, and uh, he asked this question, which one is greater, uh, love or truth? I, actually, I don't think it was your father who said this, but I remember hearing this from somewhere, love or the truth, and long an uh, short answer is love is greater. So if we choose the path of love, and love is the greatest truth of all, then even the truth is not necessarily important. So as long as we have love, we can just kind of mold it. A bit more of a central answer, but I think that it's very, very doable for us, just centered on love. Yeah, love is... Uh... Obviously, heart and love, everything should come from there. Um, anyway, just to answer my, my question, really, it's in the 19th century, and especially, obviously, with Darwin, that uh, religion and science start to really begin to divide. And, and plus, atheism, obviously, philosophically, people like Nietzsche in the 19th century, uh, it starts to develop some power. Uh, obviously Nietzsche said God is dead and but actually religious people didn't have a hard time accepting uh, Darwin's evolution and Darwin himself wasn't an atheist uh, a full-blooded atheist like the we have today um, anyway that's uh, that's there and to go back to Daniel yes obviously religion is looking at questions of meaning the meaning of life, purpose of life, and science is looking at, how, how would you define science? Science is looking at questions, as he said, the how. Science is looking at questions of function. How do things function? How do things organize? How do things work? 
Uh, are you aware that Father created a, a, an institute called the World Research Institute for Science and Technology in the early 80s? Probably John and uh, his wife know that. <laughs> well, no, actually, Jackie. to be honest, no, I don't know. He created he created such an organization, but I know about ICUS. Yeah, ICUS that. was with the scientists, but this was an internal. This was a World Research Institute of Science and Technology, and one of the other things you read in the introduction was about spirit world, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. And Father, actually, what Father really wanted this group to do was to create a method of, by which the physical world could communicate with the spirit world, like a sort of spirit world telephone. Right, right. So you could actually talk to people in spirit world. And then he thought no one could deny the existence of spirit world when they had the ability to speak to a dead ancestor. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. And they could ask them questions only they could answer. <laughs> right, right, right. Or whatever, you know, something yeah. like that. So Father... Yeah. Father's mind, you know, quite quite extraordinary. Yes, <laughs> what, what, what was that? What was that place called? It's called the World Research Institute of Science and Technology. It was located on. We used to have a building called the East Sun Building on Long Island City, in uh -huh. in New York. Uh, yeah. We had a lot of things. We made boats there and did all sorts of things there, but that was where it was located. Some some people are still. You know, it did lost its funding long, long ago. But some people are still trying to uh, to work on that. A couple of you know, <laughs> that's good. Those more eccentric unificationists trying to World, do that. Yeah. World Research oh. Institute uh, of Science and Technology. It was called oh, RIST. Science. Daniel RIST. Oh, okay. Just science. Dad, if you ask your mum and dad, just say RIST. They, if they knew someone uh, who involved in wrist I see. Hmm. yeah it's it, the science and and technology. anyway the it, it's good to understand what the goal of the principle is especially if you want to introduce the principle to people how you're going to do it in language that they can understand i think everybody can understand about existence and relationship because we're all trying to understand ourselves and we're trying to understand how to have the most fulfilling relationships therefore to experience you know the realm of love the realm of heart those things yeah. so um, i'm just thinking we we probably should come to a close we, original idea was one hour these zoom calls go on and i also know unification is if you don't actually have a, a schedule based on the example of the famous Reverend Moon, meeting has no end. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you a, a story of that. Uh, I'm not sure. I often wonder this is a real story or not. But anyway, when father sent the very first members pioneering in Korea to the small villages in the summers, right? So this is 1955, 56, 57, these sort of age. And he kept doing it, the tradition of 40 days pioneering. Anyway, one young man, one very young member went to a small village and he couldn't get anyone to listen to his lecture. So he started lecturing to the tr in the park. And one lady walked by every day and uh, she listened. She stopped after three or four days and, and said to him, what are you doing? You're lecturing to the trees. And he said, well, I <laughs> you know, lectured to somebody, you know, the trees can listen because nobody wants to listen to me. And she said, okay, please stop lecturing to the trees. You look like you're crazy. <laughs> I'll come and, with my daughter and listen to your lecture this evening. Where can I come? <laughs> <laughs> He'd got a little room and she came and she liked the lecture and her daughter liked the lecture. And she encouraged her daughter to keep coming and yeah. her daughter kept coming and her daughter heard the creation and then she heard the fall, but the daughter was engaged. And after she'd heard the fall, 
and she met the boyfriend. Uh, she this was in the fifties, so things were pretty chaste, you know. But she don't don't touch me anymore. Don't. <laughs> and then after she'd heard the whole principle, she went and she told her mom, and she broke off her engagement. <laughs> yeah. So how do you think the young man felt? He was very unhappy. So the young man came with his friends and they came and they broke into the room where this, you know, our poor guy was just a student, just a, you know, skinny Korean student away, you know, out pioneering for the summer. And they said, look, you've broken up my future marriage. I'm going to, we're going to kill you. <laughs> and the, the, the young man was obviously had a, you know, active mind and he said well it's normal that you grant one last wish to somebody before they're executed right <laughs> so in prison you're allowed to order your food before you're in american prisons can I, before you're executed right anyways took back the, the the group of you know the potential assassins right and and the guy said okay well what is it he said well he said i'd just like to teach you what i taught you the young lady who was going to be your wife. And the story was that he started, it was this was six or seven in the evening, and he taught the, the, the fiancé to be all night until dawn came, five, six o'clock in the morning, at which point the young man said, okay, I won't kill you. <laughs> I give up. I'm not going to kill you now. And that he also joined and they became one of the 36 couples. Oh, wow. <laughs> do, do you know their name? Reverend Sorry? David, do you know their name? No, I don't. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not sure about, you know, really. But anyway, <laughs> it's a great story. That's why I'm yeah, not sure it's if it's a, what we call yeah. an apocryphal story or not. But it shows, <laughs> what it does show is shows the great power of the principle and the value of studying the principle yeah. because it yes, can really yes. yeah. turn around your life. So yeah. let's, yeah. is this a good time to meet for everybody? Is this? Yeah. 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 When there isn't a rally of hope or something, we'll, we'll just meet same time next week. Yeah. yeah. Sounds so good. Depends. Sure. We may not be able to do it, but if it's fine for everybody, you know, with the COVID, I mean, it's, it's good for me. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Some people yeah. Have time. Yeah. Some All right. So, um, people say that they would like it earlier, like people who couldn't make it to this call, would earlier in the day be okay? Around five o'clock on Saturday? Yeah, okay. Five is okay. Five? Yeah. Well, I have to stick to okay, too. Yeah. Yeah, but they're three hours different. So, I, I, oh. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm fine. Whenever you want, I'll, I'll do. Mm -hmm. You don't think that's going to affect dinner too much? You'll be all right, Shauna. What time do you eat? Uh, six thirty. Yeah, so we have five to six thirty. That's fine. That's two o'clock in Vancouver time. John's already yeah. done the laundry, cleaned the house, and done the shopping. He's all finished. He's uh, <laughs> Uncle John, yeah. busy man. <laughs> <laughs> so you know about Jackie, yeah? <laughs> no, no, don't say. That. He doesn't need to know. No, I know you know. The son of Chow came to serve, not to be served. <laughs> is that okay? Is it, what? Is any, yeah. Does anyone have a problem? Is that good? I mean, well, and let's try and reach out a few more people. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. Is is that okay with you, with the Martinez family? Wujin, where are you, Wujin? I'm in Camrose. Um, Camrose. Yeah, Alberta. All right. You're in BC. You're, the flowers are beautiful now, aren't they? <laughs> so we're saying two hours before? Yeah. So at One hour. Two hours. Two hours. Two How's hours that for you, Daniel? Uh, it's same as her. It's uh, uh, I'm in Edmonton, Edmonton, and yeah, it's basically just three o'clock. So all okay. fine here. Okay, all right. Okay, let's try that then. Let's see see how that goes. So five o'clock next week. Okay. Okay. Oh, also for the reading for this week, 
I think we can read principle of creation. With that. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and read the, the creation beforehand and then maybe next, next week I'll give some presentation and then we'll have some discussion. How about that? Okay. You mean reread it on our own? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Before we start yeah. the principle yeah. creation? Okay. 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 Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. And uh, before we close that, uh, uh, Shasha, can I ask you, I'm just curious how many people from Vancouver besides me and Jackie from are joining? Vancouver. Um, from Vancouver only I'm talking not not BC oh I don't know who's from where oh okay <laughs> okay then that's okay it's okay that's okay I, I don't have to yeah. my region okay fine okay. no problem thank you <laughs> no problem. but there were quite a few people who said they joined because of Reverend Kambashi so. they were what, what? yeah they didn't hmm? because they were what a lot of people said they joined because of Reverend Kambashi. So, I mean, I don't know if they're from oh, Vancouver. Okay, thank you. That means, that means uh, you. from Vancouver. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. from BC. Could mm -hmm. be from BC. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Zooms and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Principal thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, Principal of Creation is around 60, 70 pages. So, it will be or you all read the first read the first half. Okay. We'll deal with the first part of it. Okay. I mean, people read what they can. You should be able to. I mean, if you read ten pages, a, you know, less than ten pages a day, you're you're fine. Yeah, I think it's okay. The whole okay this section. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Okay. You can know. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We'll pray next week. Thanks, Sasha. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, right, it's it said something Bye. about uh, donations. Uh, wh where would I where I just send in like I would a donation month uh, donation usual donation or is there somewhere oh, I would? There's a link on the on the on the forum. I can message you after. I can tell you. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All righty. I didn't see that.